Hey everyone. So today I want to shed a bit of light on a certain scripting technique that I don't see used very often. So I guess we'll get right into it. So uh, typically in any map where we have the player set up, which is random placement, the way we create player lands is in the land generation section with this command called create player lands, in which we can specify the terrain type, land percent, and other things. And then this command will create one origin for every player that happens to be in the game. And it will place the players randomly, uh, well, at least as randomly as possible, while still satisfying the rules of uh, where they ought to go. For example, uh, teams, uh, team members should be adjacent to each other, so uh, if these warm colors are all on the same team, they will all get placed next to each other. Same with the cool colors. And similarly, if, for example, team positions is enabled, it has to make sure that the appropriate colors are on the flanks, and then the appropriate colors are in the pockets as well. So that's uh, typically the way uh, random placement maps are made. But in addition to doing something like this, we could also just create a generic land. Uh, we'll reduce this land percent a bit, and we'll give it an assignment. We can say assign to, at team uh, one zero zero. And we can see it created a uh, just one land uh, for one player and it assigned it to team number one. And in a similar way to doing this, I can uh, create uh, three other lands, which are all assigned to team one. And now I have uh, four lands for team number one. And if I wanted to create four other lands for team number two, I can do that as well. So it's important to notice that uh, when we happen to be assigning a particular land to a player, uh, normally when we create a land, its origin would technically be anywhere on the map. But if we assign it to a player, it will always get placed in uh, more or less a circle, pretty much the same way that it would create if we just had a generic create player land statement. We can constrain it even further if we wanted. We could add a circle radius, uh, say 35, 0. And then if we add a circle radius to one of the player lands, uh, basically all the player lands will now adhere to that same radius. So what we've done so far uh, hasn't really shown much of a difference between a generic create player land statement. But the difference can come in, uh, uh, we'll be able to see that we could potentially configure the parameters of these different player lands independently. So if I wanted to have one player starting with the terrain type of ice instead of the terrain type of dirt, we can generate this and see that one player is starting with the terrain type of ice and all the rest are starting with the terrain type of dirt. And we could, in theory, generate a different terrain for basically all of the independent player lands that are in the game. And uh, this could have some sort of applications like, for example, uh, creating player forests. So if we happen to want an equal amount of wood to spawn on each player land, uh, if all of the player lands had a different starting terrain, we could just very easily go into the terrain generation section Uh, base terrain ice and percent we'll say two and if we wanted to 
do something on dirt two, dirt three, and DLC dirt four, we can see that all four of these players would have an equal amount of wood spawning within their uh, segment of player lands. And the same could be applied to the other players if we wanted to do that as well. But also it's important to keep in mind that uh, since we're starting out in the land generation section with players having a given terrain type, if we ever wanted to put elevation on the player lands, we would need separate create elevation statements uh, for each different terrain type if it was our intention to have elevation spawning over all the player lands equally. Okay, so we no longer need this elevation and terrain stuff. Uh, and we'll switch everything back to dirt for now. So one thing I do want to point out is that uh, I mentioned it before, but uh, the, this method is still technically random placement. So if we take a look at all of our lands in a circle, it's not necessarily the case that as we go along the circle that each origin is being physically placed in the order that it's created um, in our script here. Um, let me try and put this into perspective. So I start off generating four lands each assigned to team number one. And if we consider uh, this team to be team number one, these four players, they're all adjacent to each other. And if I wanted to switch it up a little bit to say one, two, one, two, one, two, one, so that we might think that every uh, player would be adjacent to two enemies instead of uh, at least one ally. That's not the case. That's not what happens. Um, when, whenever we use random placement, the physical positions still adhere to all of the rules which the game has to follow, meaning team members have to be adjacent to each other, and if team positions is enabled, the appropriate colors have to be on the flanks, and the appropriate colors have to be in the pockets. In my opinion, I think it would be <clears throat> pretty interesting to have a, some sort of parameter to be configurable so that the physical locations along the circle uh, would be created in the order that they are created in the script. But uh, for now, if we want to achieve something like that, we would have to rely on direct placement instead, which usually requires a lot more code if we want to uh, achieve some sort of randomness also. But that's not to say that this sort of method doesn't have its uses. And that kind of brings us to uh, the primary example that I wanted to go over in this video. And that example would be Black Forest. So I was watching Rage Forest uh, the other day, which is a Black Forest tournament, and there's always some discussion uh, surrounding the map Black Forest that sometimes the pawns on the map can generate more favorably for one team versus the other. Uh, over here is a pretty extreme case when we have one, two, three, four pawns uh, firmly in the control of the warm color team and we don't have any pawns spawning uh, uh, for the cool color team. Now whether or not that's game changing is uh, debatable, but uh, from a scripting perspective, I consider it an interesting challenge and we'll try to tackle that using the method that we just went over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the official Black Forest script in test number two. This is the one I'm going to be modifying and then test number three, I'm also going to paste it in so we can uh, compare and contrast later on. I don't want to be modifying the official Black Forest if I can avoid it. So in test number two, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the script into an order that makes sense to me. So player setup comes first, then the land generation section. But then after that, I want to see 
elevation coming after that. And then terrains can go after that. And then after terrains, I want to have the connections and then the objects generation section will come last. Actually, I'll keep that same order for test number three also. So uh, you can see the typical way that the Black Forest map is created. Uh, it creates player lands just with one command. And we're going to change that slightly. So we'll comment this out. And the land percent is about 50%. So, we'll, so if we have eight players in the game, 50 divided by eight is 6.25%. So we'll just round it off to six. Say terrain type will be dirt three. Land percent will be six. Base size can be the same as 13. And uh, the other zone avoidance distance can still be six. And we'll also include a sign two at team one zero zero. And then we have one player land here and we need four more to constitute team one. And then we need another four to constitute team number two. And then instead of having the terrain type of dirt three, I'll have team number two having the terrain type of grass three. So we'll comment out the script after this point. And if we go to test number two, we can see that we have a fairly clear idea of where the different teams will be generating. Since all of team one will be uh, adjacent to each other, we can see that these lands are going to be for team number one, and then the grasslands will be for team number two. Now, let's quickly make a comparison for where we are in the scripts compared to the official Black Forest script. So if we comment out the official right after the land section, that's in test three. What we can notice is that what we can see here is that we have zone avoidance. That zone avoidance of six is coming into play here, whereas in test number two, it looks like all of our player lands are sharing the same zone and they're not being separated by the base terrain of the map. And we can fix that quickly. Um, we just have to give each player land its independent zone. Zone one for this one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and zone eight. And now we can very clearly see that all of the uh, player lands will be separated by the base terrain now that they all have an independent zone. Now, the next section we'll be concerned with is the elevation. So the official Black Forest script has elevation being created on top of layer A, which was supposed to be what the player lands were being comprised of. And since we changed the terrain type of our player lands, we'll ch change this terrain type also. So half of the elevation is going to generate on dirt three, and the other half is going to generate on grass three. So we'll just take the number of clumps and cut it in half and take the number of tiles and cut it in half. So 
So we have our elevation generating both on this set of player lands and on this set of player lands. And if we compare that to where we are in the unmodified Black Forest script, which is test number three, we can see that's pretty similar up to this point. Now also, uh, we have this secondary elevation generation section, which I don't know why it's here, because it's trying to generate elevation on terrain type woodies, and as of now, there is no woodies on the map. All we have is desert and layer A, so this section is pretty much obsolete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that section from the modified Black Forest script. And now we can move on to the terrains. And this is where I want to take a closer look at the ponds because that's where they're being created, is in the terrain section, very close to the bottom. Um, it's being created on layer A. And since uh, basically the, the entirety of the map, except for the trees, is layer A, there's no way to distinguish whether these ponds will be uh, generating for one team versus the other. They may all generate on one side or they may all generate on the other side. And so we want to modify this a bit. And so I'm going to bring um, the ponds up a bit closer. And so I want to generate some water on top of dirt three and then some other water on top of grass three. So we're taking a look at this non ludicrous map size case. So we are generating 1% of the total land into four total clumps. So I'm going to cut that in half and say number of tiles is going to be 50 and the number of clumps is going to be two. Since we changed it from land percent to number of tiles, I'm going to put a set scale by size in here uh, to make sure that this 50 tile scales up depending on our map size. And then I want to do a similar thing here. Say instead of land percent, number of tiles 50, two clumps and set scale by size. And if we comment out our map just after we create the water, we can try and see what happens. So uh, now we can see that there are still four ponds being generated on the map, but we'll notice that when we keep generating, in all cases, there will always be two ponds that are generating on the grasslands and two ponds which are generating on the dirt lands. So since that's representing where the different teams will spawn, each team is theoretically going to get the same number of ponds with each generation. So when we uncomment the rest of the script, we got to make sure that uh, changing the order in which we generated the water isn't going to be affecting the rest of the script in a significant way. Um, so let's keep looking down here. So the next thing we're doing is we're creating a bunch of woodies on top of desert. So that's what it's doing. And I'm not really sure why the base terrain of the map wasn't set to woodies to begin with. It seems that would be a bit easier in my opinion, if we just said uh, Woody's up here and then we wouldn't have to cover up all of the uh, desert with Woody's down here basically that just kind of leaves us exactly where we were um, and then notably here we have a spacing to other terrain types attribute. So 
uh, previously when the water was uh, being created at the end of the terrain generation section, uh, this particular statement that is creating woodies on layer A, um, that would not avoid the water because it hasn't been created yet. So this is a potential area of concern, but uh, everything else seems like it's basically just for decoration or the spacing to other terrain types is very small, at least small enough that I'm not going to worry about it too much. But before I get uh, further along, I want to cover up the uh, different terrains of the which are comprised in the player lands with layer A again. I'm going to create layer A base terrain dirt 3 land percent 100 number of clumps set scale by groups so one for dirt 3 one for grass 3 and then just copy and paste that a couple more times to make sure that we get as much area as we can. So if we comment out the script there, we can see that now all the terrains of the player lands are homogenous, and uh, we already know that the ponds are going to be generating equally for the different teams. Um, now this next area, I want to take a look at a bit more closely. So when we're generating woodies on top of layer A, I want to compare that a little bit to the official Black Forest script. So it's at this point in the script where we are uh, undergoing this terrain statement, which is generating woodies on top of layer A. And it has this spacing to other terrain types attribute of five. So any other terrain besides um, layer A, it's going to avoid by five tiles. But if we take a look around, there's really no other terrain types between the woodies and the layer A that it's supposed to be generating on. So this spacing to other terrain types attribute is pretty much obsolete also. So in the modified Black Forest script, I feel safe deleting this or just setting it to zero. And then, as I said, these other spacing to other terrain types attributes are small enough that I don't necessarily want to worry about it. And then I th think that should be good. Go back to test two. And now we can take a look at our modified Black Forest map, which basically resembles the way Black Forest is supposed to look, with the key difference of the ponds are going to be much more consistently evenly generating between two teams. So we have two ponds for the warm color team, and we have two ponds for the cool color team. Generate another example. We have two ponds for the cool color team and then two ponds for the warm color team. And then we may still run into situations where, uh, for example, if this pond or if this pond was supposed to be placed for the purple player, that it could be pretty unfortunately placed if this wood line happened to generate after the pond was already placed. But if we're just taking a look at the big picture here, uh, we should be able to notice that uh, the disparity between ponds, uh, meaning one team having far more ponds than the other, should be a lot less significant now. So I think that was a nice example of some of the practical uses that can be achieved using a method like this, uh, basically creating each player lands individually while still using random placement. So I think that's about 
all I wanted to cover in this video. So thanks everybody for watching and I hope you've learned something.